Hello everyone, welcome back to Constructing the Enterprise J in Blender. We are now on part 16, if I remember correctly. And as you probably noticed, we are looking at the bottom of the ship. And that is because this, this is what we're going to be working on today. Uh, the bottom of the ship has seen really hardly any love for me whatsoever uh, since I've been picking up or you know restarting this project so I thought I'd get to work on it now it's now um, you probably know from previous episodes we talked about it a lot of the times is that you know it's debate about what the ship looks like from underneath but I'm going to be going with what was seen on screen on Zeddy Prime so we're gonna work on that starting with both this little section here where the sensor dome is at and as you can see I've already kind of started working on that sensor dome and we're going to work on a few extra little details, maybe in some hull plating on this part of the ship, and even lay down some edge loops, and maybe even, if time permits, start putting in some windows. I know on the top portion, I said that I was going to do kind of a hybrid of windows to where some of the windows are actually going to be modeled in, but others are going to be textured in because there's just way too many windows on here for me to try to model each and every single one of those. Um, you know, and even then, I mean, some of the windows are going to be, you know, what we'll call hero windows, you know, where you actually look inside and you don't see bedrooms, but, or, you know, living quarters, you see, you know, um, you know, a more sufficient interiors. Uh, the bottom, though, however, though, there's uh, quite a few, there's not quite a whole lot of windows there, so I might go ahead and end up modeling all those. Like on the Enterprise D, if you see in it, the top littered with windows, but the bottom portion, not so much. So we're going to kind of go with that. So let's go ahead and get started. As Once again, as you can see, I've already kind of started on the sensor dome. Now this is, for the most part, going to be roughed in i'm going to have to change this because looking closer at the image there's a couple little details that i've never noticed before uh, for example one of the details is uh, back here in the back portion let me go ahead and go into yeah right here in this back portion it it's not a complete circle it looks like that right about here it actually tapers up a bit so I, I still got to work on that, but it's the placeholder for right now. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead. I'm going to take a look at the image here. Uh, now, looking at the image, it looks like from here to about here, there's no windows. Right about here, though, we start seeing windows being populated. We also see for lack of a better term what looks like to be support struts that are visibly along the outside of the ship going this way or it's a part of the hull frame so let's go ahead and set in a couple of edge loops on that now what i need to do first is i'm going to take one of these guys and i'm going to duplicate it Oop. that's not what i wanted i'm going to duplicate him and put him down at the bottom of the hull there we go right there that way I can use that to kind of help me uh, figure out about how big these windows are going to be all right so let's go ahead and select the saucer section go into edit and I'm going to go ahead and click on this right here to where it only shows me the visible areas Ooh, what is that hello I don't remember seeing you before oh that's right that was from the windows um, yeah that's how yeah okay that explains I know there's probably an easier way to do these windows um, look back in the earlier episode to see how I did these windows and I know there's a more streamlined process of doing oh yeah like right here a more streamlined process of doing the windows so I'm gonna have to go around and fix that issue but let's go down to the bottom so we're gonna go ahead and do this and we're gonna do a control R 
and I'm going to go ahead and put these in one by one as opposed to just because you know there's several ways you can do this um, let me go ahead and control Z this if I do a control R and I move the mouse wheel you see that it gives me more your more edge loops to input in which I could do that and that would save me a lot of work and it spaces them out pretty evenly along here so if I click I can move this and it'll scale them proportionately across the hall but I am not going to do that I'm going to go ahead and put in each one of these individually now this first line looks like it may start right about there so that's going to mark the first line of windows and let me find that all right where are you at oh did i lose him already oh there he is there let's go ahead and move him over okay right about there wow he's He's tiny. Mm. Well, he is a lot tinier than I thought. You know, I'm going to go ahead and let's give him a different texture so we can, he pops out a little bit more materials materials that's world that's object material there we go um you know what let's go ahead and do wait did i select him yeah that's him oh there he is okay so he, he went through the hole oops let's bring him out again there he is and yeah that actually looks pretty accurate compared to I mean if Archer and Daniels was right around in this area looking out that looks like that'd be pretty close to uh, whether that's two miles or not, I don't know. I'm going to have to look into that. It, this ship might not be exactly two miles. Probably pretty close, but not exactly. All right, back on to what we were doing. So we're going to go ahead and go to the bottom. Now we see him. And click on this, edit. Oop, we got to move him up a little bit more. And let me pull up this image again. On the image, there's one, two, then it looks like there's looks like there's about two decks of windows, and then you skip about another two decks, and then you see two decks of windows, then another two decks. So it seems like you may skip about one, two, three, four, five, maybe four to five decks, maybe more. Then you have two decks of windows, and two decks no windows, and two decks windows, two decks no windows. And one thing about these windows is that they don't all look like that they are following the contours of the ship. They look like they might be a little bit recessed. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in a minute. So. Oh, I have moved, trying to move the wrong thing. There we go. So. what? How many did I say again? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. All right. So edit. Move them over just a little bit more. And once again, these, these placeholders, they're here just strictly just so I can try to keep everything as close to scale as possible. And I might probably eventually replace it with an actual looking human. So yeah, that's the analog of what a human looks like. So we do control R. And let's scale it down. Okay, now there's an issue there. 
Hmm. Because, yeah, I'm going to have to look into that a little bit more. Because we see it scales okay this way. But this way it's starting to squish up a bit. With that being said... No, it does the same thing there. Hmm. Okay, well, let's press on. Alright, so we're going to do a row of windows right there then followed with a, another row of windows there and let's go ahead oops let's select these control E we'll do an edge loop and then we'll do an edge slide there we go all right. Okay. Then we'll start inputting in windows. And let's try this again. Let's let's experiment a little bit more with the windows. This might look a little bit too primitive, but well, let's give it a shot. I'm going to try extruding. Then we'll scale that down. about point seven five might be a bit let's, well, let's just take a look at it we can always go back in and reset and redo it if I don't like it extrude scale point seven five there we go and yeah, these are not going to be the round, well, I want these to be the round windows, but we're just taking a look just to see how it looks. Let's go ahead and let's do this a little few, whoops, let's go ahead and do these with these here. Extrude scale 0.75 just to keep it consistent. Let's do these. Extrude scale 0.75. Enter and let's select these here. And assign. All right. Hmm. I might need to probably bring them in a little bit more. Yeah, those look like they might be a bit too far out. Or I keep those windows there, skip two more levels or two more decks, and then put another set of windows. Because, yeah, now that I'm looking at it in perspective, and that's one thing about with the modeling is you got to always kind of go back and forth and look at it in perspective. You know, especially when you're trying to go off the image picture you know, reference picture to look at, well, does this look right? And at first it did look right, but now that I'm looking closer to it, it doesn't quite look accurate. So, well, that's why we just keep pressing on. Boy, this bottom side really needs a lot of my attention. I mean, just look at that. That just, ah, looks terrible. But it'll get there. All right. So, I'll add in a couple of more of those, and we'll see how that turns out. But let's go ahead and kind of move on to some of the extra details on this part here. Um, I know I said in the last episode that this ship was going to look more grown and not necessarily like it was hull plated. And looking at the image, I mean, eh, you could still get away with the idea of it being grown, but still have hull plating. In fact, this is a... Um, in fact, you know, I'll probably end up kind of seeing if I can mimic this look throughout most of the ship. I'll post a picture up here real quick for y'all so y'all can see what I'm talking about. That extra, all that extra little hull detail right there. That might actually, I mean, might be a good idea to probably try to go the entire, look, make the entire ship kind of look like that. It's very subtle. The thing is that I'm trying to debate is do I want to do this with bump mapping rather than modeling all this or do I want to do it with... Hmm. 
That's an interesting question. Uh, what do you all think? Bump maps or should I try to model in all those details? I mean, bump maps, you know, it's a, it's a part of the texture, but the program will actually try to bounce the light or mimic the light to make it look like... It's like putting in shadows into a picture. You know, you draw a picture of a cube, it looks flat, but then when you start to shade one side of it, it looks more three-dimensional. That's pretty much what bump maps do. You'd be surprised within, you know, model making, movie industries, work and stuff, how much of that, some of those details you see on the models with, especially when you get with like the monsters with the flesh and stuff, is it's not actually modeled. It's, it's all a part of the textures. Um... I'm going to go ahead and do this. It's going to be interesting to see how I can do this with the, whoops, with the bump with this subsurf modifier. But I'm going to select this right here, edit. Now it looks like in this back portion right here, there are two little, um, You know what, I'm just now looking at this again, and I think I might have something wrong. Yeah, I think I do. Hmm. Once again, that's why you always go back and look at uh, what I'm looking at in that. Is now that I'm looking at the picture, it looks like that this detail doesn't directly blend into this it almost looks like that it kind of it comes out to here then here it curves upward because it looks like there's a whole part of this that is actually hiding behind this so it goes this way and then it curves up then you got this hmm that is interesting I wonder, is that, could that be something that they kept in mind for separation on here for saucer separation, maybe? Huh, interesting. I'm going to have to just look into that a little bit more and look at that picture a little bit more. But I'm going to go ahead and um, model those because it looks like right here there's two little holes that I don't know what they're going to, what they would be considered. Um, for lack of better explanation, I'm going to call them, you know, phaser cannons or, you know, well, let's just call them like, you know, just greebled work. We'll just, yeah, just greebles. There's two little cylindrical greeble areas here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to, if I can remember how to do this, is... How do I do this? How do I do this? Uh, give me a minute. Let me try to figure out how to, how I do what I'm going to do. Because so what I want to do is I'm going to draw real quick the, you know, input in a circle here, you know, and then make it to where it sticks to this mesh. Then I can delete this edge and then connect all these back to that. So give me a minute. Let me figure out how to do that real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, I found out how to do it. So what I'm going to do is I want to take this circle here and I want to apply it to this mesh here. You know, because that's what I got to do. I got to draw some circles and, and insert some circles in this mesh. So what I do is I put in a separate mesh, which is just a simple circle, and I'm going to add a modifier. Now I went ahead and named this one Hall 1, gave it kind of a name that I could recognize. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to move it up here temporarily. And you got to watch carefully what's going to happen. I'm going to go to Add Modifier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Shrink Wrap. And I'm going to tell it that I want it to shrink wrap to the hull. Now, if you see here, what it did is it just applied itself to where it sticks right along that hull. And it moves around. Right about there, for some reason, it's doing something weird on the mesh. I got to figure that out. Um, let me see. Why would it be doing that? There's nothing there. But yeah, you can barely see it right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it into to position, which would be right about... 
okay right about here and I'm also got to scale it up a little bit so add object select collect that again I'm gonna let's see why is it doing that all right let's go back over to here and edit all right so far that's looking pretty good whoops so oops yeah as long as I do that it's not going so I can move this around and it's it's going to stick and conform to this let's see can I scale it up yes I can and yes I will I'm going to scale it up along Ah, no. Scale. Scale up along that axis. Move it right there. And let me move it over this way a little bit. Now, what, I sh what I'm going to do is now I'm going to apply. Let's make sure I got that right where I want it. That's good. That's good. Now, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and apply this modifier here. So click apply. So now it's, now if I take it off of there and move it around, it's going to, now it's its own entity, it's separate. So now I'm going to need to join it to this. So select them both, do a control J. And so now they are all part of the same mesh. Voila. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this here let's go ahead and click on that and I want to delete the face voila let me go ahead and oh there we go now I'm going to start drawing in these edges here like that and uh, they may need to be a eh, no, that's good enough. I'm look, going back and looking at the reference photo. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is let's select, start off here with these two, select those two, and yeah, that's and I'm going to have to do a lot of fixing here. That's going to and let's see what let's see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and select those there. Select those and select those. There we go. So now just going through and just adding in all these edges here. Yeah, so I'm going to have to do some modifications with it using, you know, to try to get this mesh to look all clean and everything. There we go. Uh, it's starting to kind of clean itself, so it's not too bad. Now, I don't know what these would be used for exactly. So I don't really know about what type of technology that I should design into them. Well, I'm just going to just kind of just do the best I can to mold them and make them look as much of what I see in the picture as possible. Oh, what happened there? What? There we go. Oop, did I skip one? No, I didn't. Maybe I did. Let's go back to. Oh, yes, I did. There it is. There we go. All right. You know, I'm probably going to go ahead and cut this episode 
short here. I don't know how much longer it's been. I know that I've probably done a bunch of stuff off camera trying to figure out how to do that shrink wrap modifier. Um, so I knew how to do it. I just didn't know exactly you know, the process of it. It's been a while since I've done it. So, but um, yeah, and we're going to go ahead and just call it an episode right now. It's probably running just a little bit long. Um, but yeah, we'll pick up again. Uh, the holidays are starting to kind of come up, so I don't. I'm going to do the best I can to try to keep this as, you know, at least once a week. So that's my goal. Is I'm going to try to do this at least once a week until completion. But I also got a couple of other uh, things that I would like to to kind of start up again as well. Um, you know, I'll let y'all in on one of those. I think I might have mentioned in a previous episode is that at one point of time I was asked to actually build a ship for some for some people that were making a uh, fan Star Trek web series um, it's called Star Trek Phoenix and it is online so y'all can go ahead and you know feel free to go over and watch it uh, you know I have me personally I haven't watched any of the episodes yet but it is on my list of things to do and I will eventually watch it but they tasked me to build the ship uh, but due to reasons, they the ship that I built, they decided to go with in a different direction with it, and they decided to get somebody else to do it. Um, you know, I have no real ill will for the for the group or anything like that. You know, for why they decided not to continue to use me, I would have loved to have continued working with them. But you know, just things were happening; it just wasn't in the cards. So. You know, we went our separate ways, but, you know, I talked to the guy that, you know, that was Leo Roberts that was spearheading it. And I did ask him, you know, towards the end of my, of my work there, hey, do you have a problem if I go ahead and continue to use this, if I could, if I keep this vessel? I mean, you know, I mean, y'all aren't going to planning on using it for, you know anything down the line and he was like no you know what you designed it we're not using it you can go ahead and do whatever you want with it so um so yeah i might probably retake that one because you know i will admit the ship wasn't necessarily the best you know for you know it wasn't the best model that i that i could have came up with you know and uh, i've learned a lot so i might want to pick up with pick back up where i left off at so I might end up doing some of that what was I doing here oh yeah that's right so I might end up possibly doing some of so I might probably do that you know just for the heck of it there we go yeah I'll work on that later um, but yeah I got that project and a couple of other projects coming on down the pipeline that I'm looking forward to, and I hope that y'all are looking forward to. Not all of them are going to be Star Trek related. Um, one of them is going to be is still sci-fi related, um, and it's but it's going to expand more in outside of Blender and and 3D modeling. Uh, but and another project that I have is a project that I've had oh ever since from high school, and it's primarily in Blender, but it's not. 3D related. We'll talk more about that later. So, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and cut the episode short. Um, but I do promise that so I will have another episode next week. I'm going to have a lot of these little details. I mean, I kind of went in and showed you what I'm going to do with the windows. I'm going to try to get those, a lot of those added in. And uh, I'll get these little details added in and we'll talk more about it later. And But I'm also going to try to see if I can fix a lot of these, you know, areas that are kind of really bothering me with the way that the you know this mesh is flowing because you know so that's just yeah that just doesn't look good so i'm going to work on that but until then i uh, want to just say thank you for watching and i oh excuse me i'm sorry i uh, appreciate it and i hope to uh, say we will have another episode next week but if i don't see y'all just want to go ahead and wish y'all a merry christmas and a happy new year and thank you for watching.